Alrighty, we uh, would like to take the opportunity to welcome everybody to the uh, City Commission meeting. Today is uh, May 14, 2012. This is the work session prior to the meeting. We have a special presentation for you today. Um, as the Commission is aware, the City was a recipient of a, a grant award that allowed uh, Pike TV to enter into uh, doing a production regarding uh, historical venues. Um, Al Greenfield uh, had uh, set up the, uh, uh, I guess, the stage as of to what uh, they wanted to pursue. Uh, they, uh, we have some guests here today from uh, the University of, of Pikeville that uh, put this presentation together. Um, all of you know Al. Um, Al obviously is the station manager for Pike TV. Uh, comes to us with a, uh, a long history of doing documentaries and and uh, and, and other obviously uh, major pieces uh, for different type of networks and and uh, different organizations. Uh, so we're extremely blessed to, to, to have Al in the position uh, serving the, uh, the community as he has done. Um, so I hope, uh, I haven't seen this production yet. I think we, I was interviewed by several of the students. Uh, had a, a really fun time uh, doing this, so I'm really interested in seeing the, uh, the finished product. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Al Greenfield. Al, the podium is yours. Thank you, Donovan. Thanks for uh, having us today. As Donovan mentioned, at this time last year, uh, Melanie Stevens applied for, and you as a city commission uh, approved, and the mayor signed a grant, an application for a grant, from the National Trust for Historic Preservation, uh, specifically for Pike TV and UPike students who are enrolled in communications classes to produce some historic vignettes. Uh, the grant was awarded, and uh, today we're very proud to premiere the four historic vignettes produced by, by these students. Uh, as part of the grant, the students are required to make this presentation to you live and in person. And I'll also mention to you that this presentation is their final grade for COM 330. So I hope you're uh, receptive to what they have to say. Uh, the sites chosen for the project were this building, the old Academy building, Pikeville City Hall, the CNO Depot, the Pauley Bridge, and the Huffman Avenue Historic District. Uh, I'll have each student introduce themselves, uh, give a brief bio, talk about their experiences uh, about the project, then we'll watch the pieces. If you have any questions afterwards, be happy to uh, answer questions. So first up, Ronnie Hilton. Hello, uh, my name is Ronnie Hilton, uh, originally from Elkhorn City, but pretty much was raised right, right here in Pipeville after I was about 10 years old. Uh, I left for a little while with the Army, I came back to here to go to school at UPike. I'll be graduating here Saturday and uh, be graduating with a BS in uh, communication and uh, my video was the uh, Poly Bridge which was pretty interesting to me because I was uh, I lived at Keyser Heights for a little while and I used to ride my bike down the road and across the four lane and right over across Poly Bridge over to the other side and I never thought I'd be making a movie about it but uh, it was very interesting finding out all the history on the bridge uh, there was definitely a lot of research done. I didn't, I think I may have underestimated how much research it would take to produce something like this. But in the end, going out and shooting the footage and sitting down at the editing table and putting it all together and seeing it all come together, it's been great. Uh, I've had a great time doing it and I look forward to doing more stuff like this in the future. Thank you. Next is Lisa Trivet. Uh, who's also graduating on Saturday and uh, is the president of the senior class at uh, UPike. Uh, my name is Lisa Trivett. I am a senior and I had the pleasure of working with the CNO train depot. I am a native of Pikeville and all of my life I've lived here and I have never known that there was a train depot in town. So <laughs> it was really it was really good to know that there is a historical a historical place here in town that I can look back on and say that I you know I know what's going on and that it is here and that it is there for me to learn and for others to learn too and I had a really good time talking to Everett and Donovan about the about how enriching the town was and how the town strived on what went on by the train. I mean, they went out, people went out to New York and different places all over Kentucky and all over the country from Pikeville, and it's really hard to believe. So it was really good to know that, you know, it's here, and I obviously didn't know about it, so that expanded my horizons a little bit. 
So it was really good to work, and I'm glad I got to learn about it. And next is Rebecca Ratliff, and uh, she probably had the most uh, difficult vignette to research and put together on the Huffman Avenue Historic District, which right now is three buildings and a park, but uh, made it very interesting. Rebecca? My name is Rebecca Ratliff, and like Al said, I had the Huffman Avenue Historic District, and I am from Floyd County. I live at Harold, so when we got assigned this, I had no idea what the Huffman Avenue Historic District was. I had no idea it existed or all the buildings that were there. But through making this vignette, I got to meet some wonderful people, and I learned a lot about what actually happened here in Pikeville. And it's really wonderful to know that a lot of really historic things happened here, and we go past these buildings every single day, and no one ever remembers or pays attention to it. So I'm very thankful to be a part of something that brings attention to our own heritage and our history, and hopefully a lot of people can learn from it. Thank you. And last but not least is Jessica Bentley. And uh, as a matter of fact, Jessica was one of our first interns at Pike TV last summer. Uh, she's also a senior at U Pike. Hi, my name is Jessica Bentley. I'm from Floyd County. I graduated from Betsy Lane High School. I've been a communications major here at U Pike for about two years. Um, I was privileged to do my video over the City Hall building. What I never knew about this building was there was so much history behind it. My challenge was that I had too much info. I mean, it was a lot to sort through. It was a lot to try to piece together and really give viewers the entire story, the important parts, the things that people in this area don't know and they need to know. This video taught me that one building can really make a huge difference in a community. I mean, I got to meet so many people that knew somebody that went to school here Somebody that, you know, went to school here, that took their classes here and played basketball here. It was really great to hear, you know, firsthand their accounts of their memories from this building. So I think it's very important to know where Pikeville started and being able to take that and looking at where we are now and where we're going in the future. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a seat and uh, let's take a look. Every small town has a history and a story to tell. In Pikeville, Kentucky, a building stands as testament to the city's evolution. The mayor and city commission uh, uh, made downtown a pre preservation area uh, for the historical value. And those uh, venues that have a historical presence and have, whether it's architecturally or whether it's where something happened, uh, such as the old academy building, uh, you know, those buildings deserve to be preserved because of what they meant to the community. The Pikeville City Hall building has changed with the times and kept its value to the region. The building, located in downtown Pikeville, is one of the city's oldest and most used buildings. Throughout its lifetime, it has survived various changes and purposes, always serving a new function whenever it was needed. It was built in 1889. Uh, the Presbyterian church decided that they needed uh, some higher education in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. So they came in and started this uh, Pikeville Collegiate uh, Academy. From 1948 through uh, 52, here at what we call the Pikeville College Training School, the building that we're in right now. This room, by the way, was the sixth grade room. This is where I went to sixth grade. Miss Barrett was my teacher. Uh, many fond memories of this building and some not so fond. I kicked a football through the principal's window one day and I'll always remember that. That was reinforced with a, a good paddling. Uh, the building itself is a very beautiful uh, brick building. The bricks were made on site uh, and hand fired and uh, built by local uh, craftsmen. It was had several classrooms which were quite large, had beautiful oak flooring and they had an auditorium, which they called the chapel. The commissioner's room used to be our chapel area. We'd go to a church, our chapel, every morning, five days a week. Uh, the old stairway 
You can imagine what kids did with the stairway in the banister. The Pikeville Collegiate Institute divided into Pikeville College and the Pikeville College Academy, which occupied this building until the academy closed in 1955. I feel good about it. I look at it every time I pass it and something comes to mind every time I look at it. The building joined the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. At that point, it was being used for art classes, also holding academic classes, various community activities, and was used as a chapel. After many years of neglect, the city of Pikeville restored the building as City Hall. So not only does it uh, stir our memories about the uh, area, but it's being used every day in a very positive way. And the importance of it is, is knowing where you were um, and not forgetting where, where you came from. Um, our community um, was, uh, grew from a lot of different things. From the Civil War era, it uh, grew through coal production. Uh, and a lot of the things that have been preserved is in some way tied to, to, to that. Pikeville, Kentucky has undergone many changes in its lifetime. From a small coal town to the growing city it is today, Pikeville has played a pivotal role in eastern Kentucky. Just as the city has played an important role, the Pikeville City Hall building has played its role in Pike County. In many ways, the Pikeville City Hall building symbolizes the city itself. By looking at Pikeville now, no one could ever imagine that train tracks ran down what is now Hambly Boulevard. For most of the 20th century, Pikeville was a railroad town. Railroad came to Pikeville in uh, 1905. It was the first, and of course it was built to uh, haul the coal out of this area, which had uh, just started to become uh, a big part of our economy. Railroad, extremely important. Coal was being moved by railroad, which it still is. But the city of Pikeville was a bustling town with coal trucks and uh, people coming to visit doctors or the courthouse. But the tracks, right in the center of everything. In 1903, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad Company made plans to lay tracks in Pikeville in order to better deliver coal to the outside world and to open up that world to Pike Countyans. The railroad's success led to the construction of the C&O Passenger and Baggage Depot in 1923. The access to modern transportation produced an extraordinary growth and development in Pikeville. And uh, it was about 19 and early 20s when this facility behind us was constructed and then they had the passenger trains that came up from Iceland. And uh, you got to remember, the only way people traveled then was by rail. Poor roads, hardly no roads at all back in, in, in those times. So the railroad, uh, uh, railroad and the passenger train was a way of life, not only here, but all over America. Because of what, the, 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 what these facilities did and uh, how they serviced our communities was, was very, very important. It's uh, for a community to grow, you have to grow from, from within out. And the only way that we could get without was uh, not by horse and buggy anymore, a carriage, which is when the first settlement came in, but by rail. The Passenger Depot was a one-story, seven-bay brick building built in the classical Rivetal style. Just down the block was a smaller baggage terminal built at the same time and in the same style. A large canopy was built between them. Well, I had two functions. One was to uh, promote and, and support the coal industry for coal transportation, and the other was to move uh, passengers uh, around. So it, was, it played a very intricate part of opening up eastern Kentucky to the rest of the nation. And the train would open up and expand the world with excursions to New York City, exotic vacation spots, and even provide access to a presidential candidate. The depot served the community until railroad service was terminated. In the early 1980s, the tracks were removed and a new route bypassing downtown was completed in the cut-through project. Of course, since then, times have changed. The cut-through has come. The railroad has moved. The reason being is, uh, you know, passenger service, 
though it was profitable in that time, uh, as the years wore along, the uh, bus system uh, to uh, cut into the uh, railroad passenger uh, uh, service. Uh, it was a little more faster, a little more convenient. Uh, then the uh, automobile uh, really uh, marked the end of the pasture service in uh, eastern Kentucky. Many officials from the city of Pikeville, Pike County, and the Chamber of Commerce wanted to see the historic depot saved. The reason the depot wasn't demolished is it does have a very historical significance because understanding again uh, when Pikeville was constructed and its sort of purpose that it served was the mass transit system for our region. We didn't have and we still don't have commercial air service. Uh, there, when I was growing up there was a Greyhound bus uh, that, uh, that started service in the area, but prior to that, rail was the way that people got around. It's a historic site. Many people have it in their memories. Many people utilized it. Just became a part of what you did. The depot is now on the National Registry of Historic Sites and houses the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce and the Big Sandy Heritage Museum. As you're driving down US-23, just north of Pikeville, you may have noticed that large old suspension bridge beside the road. It's the Poly Bridge, and there's a lot of history behind it. The Poly Bridge began its long life in 1936 in the middle of the Great Depression. The bridge construction was part of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration, or WPA, to help locals find work. My father was O.S. Batten, and he de he was the design person of, of the Poly Bridge. The uh, Pike Physical Court uh, was the agency responsible for getting him to design the bridge. And the first design was of steel, and the uh, court said they didn't want that. They wanted something that would re require more labor and put people to work. So that's the reason for the stone on each side of the river. Completed in 1940, the Poly Bridge spanned nearly 400 feet across the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River. It had only one lane and served as the only bridge at that time to offer access to that part of Pike County. Of course, it was just a one-way bridge uh, when you drove the automobiles across the bridge. It was an, an arch in it, so you couldn't really see the oncoming traffic from the other side until you got over a, a, maybe a, at least a quarter of the way. And that was a, kind of a unique thing. And then, too, you had a little up and down motion when, when the vehicle was on the bridge. That bridge used to be a challenge to all the individuals who went across it, especially in a car. Coming across the Poly Bridge, uh, there, it is a swinging bridge. There's no doubt about it. The bridge was featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not as the Bridge to Nowhere. I was in with my family in later years in the 70s in St. Augustine, Florida, and went in Believe It or Not, and walked up the stairs, and there was a picture of the Poly Bridge, Pikeville, Kentucky, right in Believe It or Not. And it had on the bridge, the Bridge to Nowhere. The design is similar to other bridges throughout the area, but one feature sets the Poly Bridge apart. It is built of hand-hewn stone from this area. More than 30 suspension bridges were built in eastern Kentucky by the WPA, but the sandstone towers that support the bridge are the only ones of their kind in this area. During its lifetime, the bridge has served many in Pike County, but was the only way to have access to what is now the Poly Edition. It was important for those people that uh, lived over there and worked over there. It was very important for transportation rather than to go over the ford, through the ford. And if the river was up, of course, they couldn't do that. It was used to uh, a one-lane traffic to go from the main road, US-23, over to a railroad station, the Poly uh, Station, which is only a mile from the Pikeville Station. It used to be an airport over there. 
an airstrip before it was moved on to the cow pen area. The bridge wasn't used only for access to the airport or the poly addition. That used to be the parking place for all the young people. That you took your girlfriend across the poly bridge and that was before there were so many houses over there. The bridge remained open to vehicular traffic for a long time and provided a growing area with access across the Big Sandy. Its unique design earned it a place on the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. However, new bridges were built and time took its toll on the Poly Bridge. The bridge was shut down to automobile traffic in 2000 and closed to pedestrian traffic a year later. The future looked bleak for the Poly Bridge. Uh, because of the type of, of suspension bridge it is, and it's one of the only type of this suspension bridges that's still left in our part of the country um, for, for safety reasons and also for, uh, uh, I won't say for the durability of the bridge and the, and, and the, the type of construction, having a concrete uh, brick and mortar type bridge was far more safe, easier to commute traffic in and out of, uh, so just basically for convenience purposes. In 2006, the Poly Bridge got a new lease on life. Through the efforts of local and state government, a large grant was awarded for the restoration of the Poly Bridge. The reason the city took the, uh, the project on was because that it had a major historical significance to the area. The condition of the bridge itself was still in great condition other than the wood planks and there used to be a, a side walking pedestrian uh, uh, walkway on the side. Uh, we were able to take that off. It was about a $400,000 project to restore the bridge, so what the city was able to do Instead of spending 400000 we spent about 180000 The way we did that was is we used uh, local contractors. We actually used the fire department uh, and the police department that actually went over and there's a, uh, a bolt system that l lowers and raises the cable. So once we took off the gainway, the, the, the walkway on the side of the bridge, the bridge actually tilted to the left uh, very substantially, about went up in the air about four foot. Uh, so we had to have a special type of wrench made. The uh, police department, fire department went over and actually took two large nuts that we had a special type of nut made that goes on the, uh, the l very large bolt that where the head uh, wall is and lowered the bolt on one side of the bridge in order to equate or to get the bridge to equal itself out. Uh, then it was just a matter of going in and putting all new wood and uh, treating the wood on the bridge. In 2006, restoration was complete and the bridge was reopened to pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Thanks to many, the Poly Bridge has many bright years ahead of it. It is important to remember where we came from, what trials our forefathers went through, and how the actions of those before us shaped the path that we now travel. I think it's important to keep those things in our lives, especially in small town America. There's a lot of different value in preserving your history, uh, and Pike County has obviously uh, got a lot of it. The Huffman Avenue Historic District includes the City Park, the Methodist Church, the United States Post Office, and the Federal Courthouse. The uh, Federal Building, which includes uh, the Federal Courthouse and Post Office, at that time, uh, Pikeville did not have uh, any construction such as that. These add an important part to the history of uh, Pikeville and Pike County. So those were real landmarks in the city of Pikeville, even as I grew up. The post office was built in 1931 and is an example of modified Georgian Flemish architecture with a slate roof. The entrance is guarded by a majestic eagle. With 12 windows and 12 steps, the post office reflects strength and tenacity. The federal courthouse was built in the 1940s, an impressive two-story brick Georgian revival style building with rectangular windows on the first floor and arched windows on the second. Like any small town, Pikeville is home to many churches. Two were in the Huffman Street District, the First Presbyterian Church and the Pikeville United Methodist Church. If you look at the uh, Methodist Church, which is on Huffman Avenue, 
the cornerstone will read Methodist Church South. It was before the uh, Southern Methodists and the Northern Methodists United, which I think is rather unique. The Pikeville United Methodist Church was founded in 1845 and moved to various locations until 1911 when they bought the property on Main Street where it's located today. The First Presbyterian Church has since moved to the outskirts of town. I, I belong to what's called the MYF, uh, Methodist Youth Fellowship, but I can remember going in the basement of those church when I belonged to the Explorer Scouts. They held their meetings there. One of the crown jewels in Pikeville is the city park, and over the years it has seen many different uses and neighbors leaving many with memories and stories of their youth. Behind the park at that time, before the cut-through went through, the river was down there. And uh, we were forbidden to go near the river, which we did on a regular basis anyway, because that was part of growing up. Growing up, the park wasn't the place it is today. It was a very rough area. Uh, it was an area that you, quite honestly, didn't venture to at night. So seeing the transformation uh, into becoming a central gathering park for our community to where kids play, uh, people get married, picnics take place, uh, and actually my office is located in the city park, so a lot of government decisions are made. It is the, the heartbeat of our community. Like many places in this part of the country, eastern Kentucky saw its share of bloodshed from feuds and some from war. The city park has a profound connection to both. During the Civil War, uh, uh, James A. Garfield was commissioned as a Brigadier General here in the city park. Uh, it's where uh, the troops encamped. So there was a lot of different things that occurred over the years uh, that gave us our history and our heritage. The Huffman Avenue Historic District is important to Pikeville's history and to its future. For human beings are not creatures of nature. We are inheritors of the history that has made us what we are. Not to know our history is not to know ourselves. I think that was uh, you and your students. It was an absolutely outstanding job. Uh, the mayor and I were actually in a uh, meeting regarding the uh, sewer plant whenever I had to excuse myself, mayor, from the White House to go to do these interviews uh, a couple of, of uh, weeks ago. But, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, if, if uh, you know where you're, you're wanting to be, you've got to know where you came from. I think it was kind of paraphrased just a moment ago. I think this is a great depiction of uh, where we were and where we are today. So, uh, you know, it, my wife and I, uh, Al, as, as the commission is aware, did a uh, video called Now and Then Video. And just knowing what our history was uh, and how we have transformed has been remarkable. And I think uh, it was, even during that time, it was very difficult to go and find pictures and to find narration and to find the history. So uh, from the students, uh, for me to the students, you all did an absolutely phenomenal job at portraying our community and uh, coming up with what the essence of each one of these projects are. So I congratulate you and you were a, a pleasure to work with such raw talent uh, to bring me into the light there as well. So I greatly appreciate that. Uh, would anybody else like to say anything before I turn it over to Al? First, I'd like to thank you for participating in this program that we had. This is what Donovan and the county judge and Al came on board, Governor Paul Patton dreamed about, was forming a course for Pablo College participated in it was just a good deal. But uh, the folks did a wonderful job. I just like to back up, much like Dallas said, and say a few things about each one of them. This academy building, you know, Homer Mullins is a generation up. People still talk to us today, you know, about telling us stories about attending this academy. Commissioner before us, they preserved this building. They did a wonderful job, and uh, we enjoy it today, just like you pointed out. As far as the Huffman Avenue area goes, I mean, that was wonderful. I mean, I learned things that I didn't know about, and I didn't know when the Presbyterian, when the Methodist Church joined together, 
and that was great history. And I'm sure that was hard to document. As far as the train depot went, that's uh, that was well documented. Barry, you did a good job in your interview explaining, you know, the importance of the depot to our area. The tracks came through this town, and I mean, I'm 51 years old now. That's how I went to bed every night. I'd sit there and listen for that train come. And it was right across the road from my house on the Klein Street. I just hear the clickety click of that track, and I never did hear him go back, you know, by. Now, the Greenfly Bridge, <laughs> that's the Poly Edition Bridge. I take offense of it being called a bridge to nowhere because my wife lived over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to go over the Greenfly Bridge to get to her. Uh, well, anyway, Al, you're doing their grades. I think they all deserve an A, and I appreciate y'all coming up. Thank you.